Welcome, everybody. Welcome. It is a little rainy winter day here in Southern California, KHTS 98.1. And you can listen on hometownstation.com, hometownstation.com. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at an undisclosed location still battling this cold, but I am doing better. I am doing better. I'm your host. 20 years of doing this show called The Business of Life, and today I've got a very, very special guest, somebody that uh, I honor, somebody that you know well here in Southern California, especially in the Santa Clarita Valley, somebody that we need to hear from today, somebody who is respected and admired and trusted by parents, schools. Uh, both my wife and I have been to his seminars, and I can, I can tell you this, our relationship with our teenagers is significantly better than it was before we ever met my guest. I don't want to give his name yet, and I just want to make an editorial comment about what happened in Florida a couple of weeks ago. I believe in my heart of hearts that our community needs to come together, that it's a local issue. Yes, the federal government is going to get involved. They should be involved because not every community – is as prosperous, is, is, is as successful as Santa Clarita. Here in Santa Clarita, we can take care of our own. I believe that in all my heart. But there's a lot of communities that don't have the riches of the people, don't have the riches of the facilities. They just don't have the ability to protect themselves, and that's why the federal government exists, to protect its employees. But it's up to us. It's up to everyone listening to my voice and everybody not listening to my voice. It's up to all of us in our community to protect our children. That's our number one goal as parents, grandparents, as human beings, is to protect our children so that our children can go to school and feel safe. And I think I mentioned it a few days ago that my granddaughter is fearful of going to high school now. That's not a good thing. So it's up to all of us adults to provide leadership. And I have truly one of the great leaders in our community. His name is Alex Urbina. His book, his first book is called The Inspirational Parent. And his second book is going to be called How to Raise a Teenager because he has some thoughts, some ideas. Uh, He works with teenagers in our community. He has seen how teenagers react to certain types of communication. And we're going to talk about communication today. That will be a big subject. So, Alex, welcome to KHTS. You're certainly uh, uh, well-known here in our KHTS community. you got your own show every Friday at noon with your beautiful wife, uh, daughter, excuse me, Jasmine. So how are you, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you, too. So, this subject uh, is near and dear to your heart and my heart and, and anybody that has a heart that's beating that loves children. We've got to find a way to solve our own problems. They're complex. It's not all about guns. It's not all about uh, uh, the mental health. A lot of it starts in the home, doesn't it, Alex? Absolutely. Actually, it, it all starts at the home. Um, that's where we learn as human beings to love um, that's where we're either being taught how to love or not. And uh, I think that's the, the main foundation of what's really going on, uh, that this, you know, the stuff that we're de- dealing with in today's world. There's so many broken homes. I grew up fatherless. I grew up in a broken home. I, I was a foster kid. And, uh, my mother uh, didn't have a clue uh, how, how to raise uh, my brother and I, and, and you know, we were put into foster homes. I got lucky because my brother and I were both really good athletes. My brother became a, a college baseball player at Northridge and then served in the Army, playing on the Army baseball team. I went on uh, to play college baseball, and then I went in the Navy. So I got lucky, so did my brother. But let's start with the broken home. This kid that did all this horrible, horrific damage, his dad died. At a young age, his mother just passed away last year. So this kid uh, was was struggling with a lot of broken issues. Uh, what is your thought on how to reach out to kids that don't know how to reach back? How do we help these kids 
that are in broken homes, uh, pending divorces. Maybe there was a, uh, a death in the family. Maybe uh, uh, there's a newly divorce going on. Maybe you've got a parent on drugs or alcohol. These teenagers aren't responsible. It's not their fault that their parents are so dysfunctional. Where, where do we start? I think we start as a whole, as a community, and that's, you know, every human being making sure that they don't just walk around with blinders on, but that we are present and in the moment and observant and just looking around and making eye contact with people to find out who's suffering and who's not. If, you, if you're actually present in your daily life and you look around, you can see people that are hurting. And uh, if you really look hard enough, you can spot them, and all it takes is a compassionate hello or to strike up a conversation with somebody to see if you can help make a difference in, in the lives of someone else other than you. And I think that collectively, if we can all start to look out for each other and operate from that place called uh, I'm my brother's keeper, we could really heal the world. But I think that in today's world, it seems to be a pattern that as a society, we're only focused on me, you know, me, 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 what am I going to get rather than looking around and trying to be a contribution to other people. I think, I think you've got uh, a really good start that I, I, I want to continue being present. I don't think, I don't think most of us really understand that. It, it took me going to your workshop last year for me to understand really what being president is about. But let me go back to something you said here a few seconds ago, and that is there's another issue, and that is we're all afraid for various reasons. We don't want to get sued. We don't, know, we don't, we don't want the media coming down. You know, talking to uh, adults, talking to young people or reaching out to young people uh, there's some uh, jeopardy issues there. How, how, how do adults deal with that when they see somebody, uh, maybe at a coffee shop, maybe by themselves on a corner? I mean, how do you how do we deal with this issue of being present and not putting ourselves in harm's way? I think it starts real, really subtle. You know, we can go back to the basic fundamentals about just being a decent human being and being connected with others. It can start with a hello. It can, it can be as simple as making eye contact with someone. Or as you shake their hand, you know, you look at their eyes and you say hello. Um, you know, it's nice to meet you. And, uh, or, or you can, you know, like earlier when we started the show, you know, when you, when you said those nice things to me, my response to you was I appreciate you. There's little things that you can say and who you're being that you can make people feel special. And that, that doesn't take any special quality to be able to make other people feel special. All it takes is for you to connect and, and verbalize that communication to other people. Every adult, every person needs to be kinder. Tell us what being present is. What, what is it? Being present is simply learning how to shut your mind off and allowing yourself to really be in each new moment without having a thought of what's going to happen, what you think is going to happen, what you think should happen, and just allowing yourself to be in each new moment and let that moment unfold the way that it does organically. And I think that we've conditioned ourselves as human beings to be using our brain so much that we don't realize that it runs us. Our brain is, I think, is for the most part, as human beings, we, we've become our brain. We've become our thoughts. And being present is just allowing yourself to be disconnected from any thought and allowing yourself to be in the present moment and allowing the moment to unfold the way it does on its own. It's such an important concept for people to understand, especially uh, people that are hardened or people that have put their walls up. I know that Growing up, I had a lot of walls up. In fact, when I went to your workshop, I had a wall up. I, I remember the, uh, the Saturday morning that we were to go. I'm thinking, man, I need an excuse. I can't do this. You know, uh, I, I, did, I, I didn't know you that well, Dad, but I didn't want to go because I was fearful. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. And, you know, I was this big macho guy that that thought i was in control of everything well now i have to go and kind of not be in control and so uh 
for the first few minutes of the workshop, I remember acting out, and that wasn't being present, and I got called on the carpet, and after the first break, everything changed for me, and it has ever since because I learned from that moment with your help that being present allowed me to be vulnerable, and I was a person that didn't understand vulnerability. And I think as an adult who's raising kids, don't you think it's okay to be vulnerable? I think vulnerability is the most powerful tool that any human being and parent has in their tool belt. Um, I never realized how powerful vulnerability was until I actually had my own breakthrough as a young man um, in in being vulnerable, I realize how powerful it is and how moving it is and how inspiring it can be to other people. But my ego growing up thought that it was a sign of weakness. Uh, my ego had me believe that me being vulnerable was letting other people see the weak, the weak spots that they could come in and manipulate me. So uh, my ego at all costs would not allow me to be vulnerable until I became conscious until I started to reclaim my own conscious life and decide that I was going to trust the vulnerability and then allow myself to practice being vulnerable to see what new results could be created from them. And once I tapped into that vulnerability, uh, there was some profound results that happened in all of my relationships that, that has transcended uh, all my relationships from that moment on. It's such an important subject that uh, you have a parent who is not vulnerable and uh, has been hardened by life, and they have a teenager, and it's the parent's way or the highway, and uh, that opens up the whole subject of communication. So if you have a hardened parent who's not vulnerable, uh, you're not going to get uh, authenticity uh, from your teenagers. So let, let's get into this a little bit, because if we can get teenagers to be more honest, to be more open, to share their true feelings with their loved ones, you know, maybe there's a chance for us to have a better world, a better community. Am, am I on the right path here? Absolutely. But let me, let me throw a couple of um, daggers into what you just said. And I'm doing it on on purpose. I'm going to do it with an intention. So imagine your kids are at a certain place in their life where you really want them to be vulnerable and open up and turn to you and share deeply and share honestly with you. But you live in the illusion that you are already being that way and you expect your kids to be that way. But you don't know that you're not. You don't know that you're not being experienced by your kids or other people around you as being open and loving and vulnerable and present until you have that wake-up call, similar to the wake-up call that you had. Because you went into this workshop thinking that you're the most loving, vulnerable, compassionate, open-minded guy in the world. Did you not? Yes. Until, until you had an opportunity to be confronted and given multiple opportunities for you to test that. And when it when you got those opportunities to be tested, that's where you had the breakthrough. That's where you had the aha moment, the realization that there were deeper levels than the, than the little box that you kept putting yourself in. And once you had that breakthrough, a whole new world opened up for you and you realize that you can open up your vulnerability and being present to deeper levels. And that's what happens when it comes to parents. Your kids are yearning for you to access uh, vulnerability at a deeper level. They want you to be open-minded at a deeper level. They need for you to access that such that they can trust you enough to be able to practice their own vulnerability and their own uh, being present and their own uh, willing to trust you in that moment and create that kind of relationship. Wow, you're listening to Alex Urbina on the show we do every Tuesday at 1 o'clock called The Business of Life, 20 years and doing this show. And it was so important for me as the, as the host, Coach Ron Tunick, to have Alex on today because he is truly one of our community leaders. And I wish he was on the radio every day. I wish he was doing uh, parenting classes. You know, there there is no 
really manual to be a parent. And today, it's got to be so complex, Alex, to raise kids, to deal with the social media and the technology and the and and the crazy world that we live in. It, it it's not a very calming atmosphere, is it? No, but you know what? I love I love what you just said. You said that there's no manual to be a prep parent. When I was a kid growing up, my mom used to say that to me all the time. She used to say, there's no manual to raise a kid. There's no book to to be able to read, to be able to, to raise my child. And I hate to say this, but in today's world, there are manuals and there are books. What's lacking is the courage within the parent and the humbleness to be willing to seek out a manual, to seek out books, to seek out other mentors or coaches that can help you develop and grow to your next level. It's that ego that doesn't want you to uh, admit that there are more things for you to learn. There are more things for you to practice. There's deeper levels for you to um, get to, to evolve to, to be more aware, more conscious. And so I think it's, it's not about not having the tools or the guidance or the manuals or the information, what we need is more courageous parents that are, are willing to look at themselves and be honest and say, all right, there is more work for me to get done. And if I'm willing to do that work, it just might be the breakthrough that I need to be able to have that kind of deep, meaningful connectionship with my kids. Boy, do I agree 100%. Uh, you can listen to our show every day for all the great shows on KHDS. Just go to hometownstation.com, hometownstation.com, or download our app. We have the best radio app in the country. Just go to the App Store and put it in KHDS 1220 AM. My wonderful guest today, and he's so needed right now in our community, Alex Urbina. So, Alex, your last comment uh, just touched me because how do we get the parents to come together? I mean, we're so fragmented, even our own community uh, you know, you're right. We need parents to step and say, step up and say, I don't know how to do it, or I need help. Uh, how how do how do parents get help? And and boy, do you have to be courageous to to call somebody. How do we start? How does a, somebody listening to your voice right now in KHDS ninety eight point one? How wh- how do they call you first? How how do we do it? How do we make these connections? Well, I think it really decide it, it it's going to decide on the person who is hearing our voices and deciding that the information is resonating f- from within them and that they see the value to want to be coached or mentored or they want to evolve or grow to the next level because they realize that their kids growth and the results that they want their kids to develop in is going to have to start with them the parent and I hate to say this, but it's the illusion that parents have that they think that in order to make a difference with their kids, that you have to start with their kids. And it doesn't work like that. In the universe, the way it works is you have to start working with the parents. A parent has to be willing to do their own work. And then what happens is by you doing your own work as a parent, and I'm talking when I say your own work, I mean your own interpersonal work, working on your fears, on your insecurities, developing all the interpersonal gems and jewels that you have that are deep within you and you start accessing those things, then your kids' results are a byproduct of the work that you're doing on yourself. And that's the way it really works in the universe. And so uh, what I think most parents try to do is they try to get their child and take them to a professional and say, here, here's my kid, fix my kid for me. So you might seek out a therapist or a coach or a mentor, and you, you want to drive your son or daughter to someone else and say, here, do, do your magic on them and then send them back to me. And it, it just doesn't work like that. It's, that's an illusion that we live in. Um, and as long as you keep living in that illusion, you're going to keep being stuck in that vicious cycle, creating the same result over and over again. Well, I know, I know Alex, that you do coach parents. Uh, wonderful guest today, Alex Sorbina. His uh, book, The Inspirational Parent, uh, is probably where any parent who is concerned and cares and loves their kids, uh, this is a great book to start. We're going to get into some of the things in this book. Uh, our second half of the show, we're going to get into a subject about communication because the art of communicating, whether 
you're a parent or in business or in life is so critical to having a, a winning life and a winning outcome. Before we go to break, though, I want to ask you a question about parents who are so hardened because it's their kids. They always think they're right. Don't tell me how to raise my kids. I know. I hear it. I've heard it over the years. Don't tell me how to raise my kids. What do we deal? What do we do with parents that that have that attitude, which is quite a few parents? That's a great question. You actually don't do anything. They're they're on their own journey, and they're going to make their own mistakes. And um, you, the only thing that you and I can do, Coach, is to continue to talk about this bring light to it, uh, create awareness, have these powerful discussions, plant these seeds, and hope that the people that are listening, and it's a small percentage, it's probably about 3 to 6% of the world, the parenting world, that people are starting to wake up a little bit at a time every day. And those are the ones that we're talking to, the ones that can actually hear what we're saying. And a little bit at a time, we're kind of you know, speaking that language to them and hoping that, that they're – our, what we're saying is resonating with them and that, that each one of them reach out and that they want to kind of take themselves to the next level. And that's kind of what, what, what we got to do is just keep talking about these things. How do people get a hold of Alex Urbina? If, if, if one parent is listening today and wants a breakthrough in their life, how do they get a hold of you? Well, you can reach me by phone, 661-505-5021. Or you can send me an email if you if that's a better way for you to kind of break the ice at alex at alexurbina u r b i n a dot com. You can always just send me a message, or you can go to the KHGS website and look for my information. Um, it's not it's not very uh, challenging to find me. Just Google me, and uh, there's I answer all requests. I don't care if they come through social media, my phone. Uh, if you send uh, air signals. And, and it somehow it, it comes to me. I always follow up with every request that comes to me. And ladies and gentlemen, I have to just tell you from personal experience, so when my wife Ellen and I met Alex several years ago and went to his workshops, our marriage has improved dramatically. But what also has improved our ability to communicate with our kids and our grandkids. And when we come back from a break, I want to get into the subject of communication because you, on your show on Friday with Jasmine several weeks ago, uh, I listened to the whole show, and you talked about how parents speak at one level and the teenagers are listening at another level. So we'll be right back. The show is called The Business of Life. We're discussing maybe one of the most important topics we can discuss today, and that is taking care of our kids protecting our children and alex and i both believe it starts in the home we'll be right back on kcs 12 20 and 98.1 fm why do people from all over santa clarita come to our spa in canyon country simple they want the highest quality services at prices that everyone can afford this is rosemary from beyond harmony med spa read our reviews and know why we won the ultimate beauty awards two years in a row by the readers of elite magazine come and see how close we really are and experience the level of excellence that our clients have loved for the past 13 years go to beyondharmony.com or call 298-8008 today for a free consultation it's allergy season again. You've tried it all, yet your sinuses continue to be a problem. Try something different, something holistic, something that will really work. Acupuncture. Kathleen Keneally is Santa Clarita's acupuncture and Nate specialist. She's been treating many of your neighbors and their children for allergies, sinuses, headaches, and pain. Find out how acupuncture can improve the quality of your life. Call Kathleen Keneally for a free phone consultation. 252-4100. 252-4100. Acupuncture. It really works. Hey there, I'm Tori with your hometown station weather. A mix of sun and clouds today, a high of 54 degrees, clear tonight, a low of 36. More of the same for tomorrow. Rain is expected on Thursday. And Monty Gonzalez will be performing at the PAC, the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at COC, on Friday, March 9th at 6 p.m. Imani Gonzalez, a jazz world vocalist. Imani Gonzalez at the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at COC next Friday, March 9th. Santa Clarita's hometown station. 
Now FM, 98.1 FM, and AM 1220, your hometown station. Welcome back. I, I, I love George Strait. Uh, I wish that uh, I could listen to country music uh, all day long, but I got to work. I, I got to support the family, and I love doing all my radio shows on KTS 1220 and 98.1 FM. And uh, today's a very special show because I have somebody that uh, I've worked with over the last few years, somebody that I listen to a show every Friday at noon, somebody that I trust, and, and you know him well in the community too. His name is Alex Urbina. And the subject of communication, ladies and gentlemen, Alex is helping me and my wife understand communication, not only in our marriage, but how we talk to our kids and grandkids. Because I might say it one way, but the kids hear it another. Am I right on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You don't want to live in the assumption that the words that you use are being interpreted exactly the way that you say them and the way that you mean them to the other person the more you start to realize that um, what you communicate might be misinterpreted by other people and so one of the best communication tools that I teach my clients is after you're done sharing yourself or giving instructions or having a dialogue one of the best things you can do is ask the other person to repeat back to you what they heard you say and when they repeat back to you what you what they heard you say it gives you an idea of how well they interpret the words that you're using because words are powerful words mean things and you can easily offend somebody or turn someone off or 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 show up as disrespectful to someone else when that's not your intention and a lot of times when we communicate we communicate with the assumption that what i said the other person actually heard me and so I think the the best tool you can have is just to ask the other person what they heard. And by doing well, that, I, and by doing that, you're able to now, you know, hear for, out of their mouth um, what's being landed on their end. Well, first of all, I can't wait for your book to come out, How to Raise a Teenager. But I think raising a teenager today may be more complicated than putting a man on the moon. And I, I'm serious <laughs> when I say that. Because, you know, I, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four. I, I can imagine uh, when I was talking to my children, you know, uh, when they were much younger, you know, and I, I was aware uh, because I was a public speaker and I did a lot of motivational speaking. So I was aware, even as a young man, my voice inflection, uh, I was aware of not talking down to them. But what I wasn't aware of was I was, you know, 25 years or 22 years older than they were. So the language that I knew or the language that I was using at the time or the language that I was using in my business was not appropriate to communicate to a 9-year-old or 11-year-old or a 14-year-old. And, and you know, this is a big issue today if, if a teenager – gets turned off early in the game, boy, the, now who do they turn to? Their peer group. Well, what if their peer group do, doesn't have their best interest at heart? Or what if their peer group is going in a direction that I don't even want to talk about? What, where, where do we start to learn how to communicate? I think we start by being honest with the possibility that we don't know how to communicate effectively. I think that's number one is and that's a tough one that's a very challenging thing for the ego to accept is that hey maybe maybe there are things that i can still learn maybe there maybe there's other concepts that i could be taught and have these uh, very powerful moments of realizing that there's uh, more advanced tools and how to speak to my kids and if i took a couple of those courses or some of those workshops i might learn how to speak a different language I might learn how to speak Tinglish. And if I learn how to speak Tinglish, then my kids can actually hear what I'm saying and they can start to trust me more. And once they trust me more, 
I'm now more of an influence on them than their peers are, than the kids that are out there up to no good who is calling to your son or daughter to say, hey, come hang out with us, come do some of the things that we're doing in the neighborhood or, you know, come hang out with us and do some of the things that we're, we're up to no good. And so you're in a battle with all the other influences around your kids and you have to figure out how to sharpen your tools and, and learn how to um, hook their heart and have them turn to you when they're stuck or when they're lost or when they're sad or when they're hurt. It's so complicated, Alex. Uh, my wonderful guest today, uh, Alex Urbina, who's truly an expert on working with young adults and uh, an expert on relationships uh, in the home. Uh, I know it for a fact because my wife and I have gone to his workshops and our marriage and our ability to communicate with our own kids and teenagers is tried and true now, Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, and, you know, every time I see you, I thank you. But, you know, the the art, the complexity of communicating, how, how do you even start a conversation? How, how would you start it? Somebody's listening to your voice. They know that they need to do better. They, they, they know that their uh, pipeline uh, isn't really that open. Where does a parent start? How do they start? What I, what I like to tell my clients is to call a meeting, you know, in your living room or uh, decide that you're going to have a meeting at dinner around the, the dinner table. And then once you have all parties whom you want to communicate to um, sitting around in a circle where you can all make eye contact with each other, it starts with just being honest. And if that means that you're nervous, maybe it starts with you acknowledging, hey, guys, you know what? I'm really nervous right now. I don't know how to start this. But sometimes being honest and sharing your fears or sharing your uh, whatever, whatever emotion you're feeling, sometimes that sets the tone for everyone else to trust you in that moment and really listen to you wholeheartedly. So I would start with that, just have an, have an honest opening. The reason why I called this meeting is because I have a couple concerns. Um, they might be my concerns. They might be my fears. I don't want to project those onto you, but I want to have a discussion so that I can share them to help make sense of them. And if you guys can help me do that, then we're all great. And so it just starts with a few powerful distinctions that you have to learn um, when communicating, and when you learn those things, all of a sudden communicating becomes a lot easier for you. And you guys are able to walk away from the living room, um, everybody hugging each other or everyone saying how grateful they are for the relationship, and you guys walk out of a very powerful conversation rather than going into a conversation not being present about what you want to say or have an intention about what you want to say, and then and then getting somebody upset or someone gets mad and someone walks out of the room, and then you're left stuck there wondering what happened. Wow. I, ho I hope in your new book, How to Raise the Teenagers, that you go into detail on that. You just gave me a great idea because uh, starting a conversation with some of my grandkids, I, it's been awkward for me. Some of my grandkids have an IQ twice mine, and I don't know how to start the conversation. So... Uh, I will try that this weekend. That That is a brilliant concept. Just be open and honest and say to the teenager, I'm a little nervous. It, it's a little awkward. Uh, help me help me start the conversation. So Absolutely. Here's, uh, an, here's another suggestion is when um, a lot of times I'll have parents say, you know, every time I try to open up a conversation, my son is stuck on his computer or he's playing his video games. He doesn't want to come off the video games. A lot of times I'll say, why don't you pick up a controller and start challenging them in the game? You're going to have to start thinking outside the box. You're going to have to start meeting these kids where they are in their world rather than being upset and angry because they won't come off. Or a lot of times I'll tell, I'll tell my clients, um, if you want to start the dialogue, why don't you pick up, pick up the basketball while your son's walking outside and challenge him and say, hey, I want to, you know, can you do this? And start, you know, uh, taking shots. Um, or, or, or you got to start thinking outside the box and get creative. You know, tell your son that you want to, you know, battle him in basketball or play a game of horse. And if you win, you guys get to sit down and have a conversation. You have to start to reinvent yourself as a parent. Um, you can't bring your old uh, 
pat- communication patterns from your parents into this new world where these new kids are being born into this this new world, um, you have to start to kind of think outside the box more. Let me let me go back a second because uh, you brought up a, a concept that I grew up with, and my wife and I honor, and that is something called dinner. But I I don't know how many parents. Uh, have a dinner table every night or even four nights a week where they can sit down with their teenagers or young adults and have a family meeting and and even start to have these conversations. So I think there has to be a a reset, if you will, of how a family is going to conduct itself in 2018 and, and raise kids that not only are responsible but want to give back to humanity want to care at school when they go to school and, and want to give back to their own uh, parents. So talk a little bit, how, how we, how do we reframe this? How do we reset? So there is a, a dinner meeting, so to speak. The way that we reset is for you to decide that you are the leader of the family and you got to figure out how to get these tools that I'm talking about, these parenting tools. I'm going to call them conscious parenting tools. And when you go on a mission and you start to seek out uh, conscious parenting tools, as you start to put some of those tools into your tool belt, you start to practice them. And when you start to practice them, you actually start to create different results. And when you start to create those different results, you start to validate, hey, these tools really work. And then you get better at it. And then you go back to... Uh, where you got those tools and whether it's with a coach or a mentorship or, or books or seminars or workshops or whatever it is, you start to grab new, you keep grabbing new tools for today's world with today's teenagers. And so it starts with you deciding that you're going to create that kind of change in your family. Because if you're sitting there hoping or wishing and waiting for your son or your daughter to cause and create that, it's not going to happen. You have to decide as the parent that this is the kind of life that you want. This is a new, a new legacy that you want to create. It's, it's, a, it's a new uh, change that you want to make within your family. And then you've got to embark on that journey. You know, it, it, you couldn't be more spot on. You couldn't be more real. Uh, I wanted you on my show today, Alex Urbina, because you do tell it like it is, whether we want to hear it or believe it or accept it. Uh, I, I, I don't think parents have the tools today. I, I really don't. I, you know, and, and people don't read anymore. That's the sad part. The statistics on who reads books is staggeringly sad that, you know, unless you get to age 55, you're not reading a book. You might be reading a paragraph or two on parenting somewhere online, but, you know, the book that you wrote and the book that you're writing now on how to raise a parent uh, how to raise a teenager? You ought to write a book too on how to raise a parent. But <laughs> let's let's start with how to raise a teenager. I I agree. Uh, parents don't have the tools. Just you just said something to me a few minutes ago when I asked you about communication that opened my eyes uh, because I I feel awkward sometimes starting a conversation with some of the teenagers that I know love me and I love them. They're sitting in front of their computer. Uh, they're preoccupied, and I'm gonna. I, I will report to you and everybody in the next couple of weeks how it works out because I will say that uh, to my teenagers who are or, or, or grand grandsons, and see what happens when it, when I am that honest with them and say, "Look, this is a little awkward. I don't know how to start the conversation. Will you help me?" So this goes back to something. We talked about in the first segment, I I need to be more authentic with my grandkids or my kids. I need to be uh, more open, uh, which means I need to be more vulnerable. Uh, So uh, you've helped me just in the last few minutes. How can you help somebody else? How does somebody get a hold of Alex Urbina? If somebody's listening and, and they know they don't have the tools, to raise a teenager, how does somebody get a hold of Alex Urbina? Well, if you're 
listening to this show or, you know, listening to any of the content that I have on my website or, or my book, and you've decided that you want to take yourself to the next level and you really want to develop some, some conscious parenting tools and you decide that you want to embark on that journey, I can help you. And the way that we would do that is it would look like a consultation, probably a 45-minute consultation where we meet up or we do a Skype call. And I tell you a little bit about what it looks like to be coached and mentored. And once that I once I've uh, had that conversation with you and that consultation, and we feel like we're a match, and you feel like I I feel like you're coachable, and you feel like my coaching is going to support you, then we'll embark on a coaching journey. And what I'll do is week by week we'll meet once a week, and every time we meet. I'm going to ask you what it is that you want and what are you committed to, and I'm going to meet you where you are, and I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to empower you. And so it's going to be like a dance. And week by week, you're going to grow, and you're going to evolve, and you're going to become more aware and more conscious and more powerful. And as that growth happens, you're going to be changing, and your kids are going to start to notice it. And as they notice it, they're going to trust you more, and they're going to they're, you're going to inspire them more, and they're going to want to be able to uh, communicate with you, and they're going to turn to you for advice. And before you know it, what happens is uh, your son or daughter are now going to start uh, seeing you more as that parent or that mentor that they've always wanted. And that doesn't mean that you haven't, you're not mentoring them and that you're not their mentor or their advisor because uh, all parents, you know, by default love their kids and will do anything for their kids and have a certain level of influence. But if you want to take it to a whole nother level, uh, you got to get ke- coached. You got to get mentored. You got to, you got to decide that you're going to embark on a new journey. And the way you can do that is just reach out to me, 661-505-5021, or send me an email at alex at alexurbina.com. The uh, issue of authenticity and vulnerability, uh, you've helped me, you've helped my wife. Uh, it, it's helped me so much in my personal life, my family life, and my business life. And it's something that we have to learn to do. We, we learn it from uh, coaches and teachers and mentors like yourself. Before we take a break, I, I want to uh, make an editorial comment and, and get your feedback, and then we discuss it a little bit more after break. So I opened up the show by saying that the horrible tragedy that took place on February 14th in Florida, it is the responsibility of every community to take care of its own. Right here in Santa Clarita, we have a wonderful, wonderful community. And it's up to us to take care of our kids. That's our number one responsibility as parents as human beings, as people that love children, to make sure that these kids feel safe going to school and that they have adults that they can talk to. So we, all of us, need to provide leadership. So uh, I have a son that's a school teacher up in Oregon. I have a, uh, a, a daughter-in-law that's a, a school teacher. And when I've talked to them about this issue, the first thing that they say to me is, Dad, we, we don't have the resources. Well, when somebody says they don't have the resources, they're telling me they don't have the money. I get it. I get that smaller communities don't have the money. So here's my comment to all of you that are listening, is that if we have to pay an extra half cent or one penny in an in additional sales tax for our community to protect our kids, now we take away the biggest excuse that we have. We now have resources. So with those resources, we can do the things that need to be done, more mental health educators, more security, more this, more that. But we can't keep making excuses that we don't have the resources. We do have the resources. It's up to the politicians, the local politicians, to make it happen. In a heartbeat, I'd vote for another penny. As much as uh, my wife and I pay enough tax, uh, and I don't really want to pay another tax, I'll pay anything to protect our kids, Alex, anything. Your comment, please. i tell you what, why don't we take a break, and after the break, I'll, I'll address that. We'll be right back. The show is called The Business Life. 
every Tuesday at 1 o'clock on KHTS 98.1 and on hometownstation.com. You got some aches and pains, you weekend warrior, chronic inflammation or chronic pain, well guess what, I've got a solution for you. It's called Men Cryotherapy, right here in Santa Clarita. Men Cryotherapy is what the major leaguers are using to mend their aches and pains. They're in the LA Fitness Shopping Center on Newhall Ranch Road. They could be a wonderful blessing for you to relieve you of your joint pain and regain your mobility. Remember the name, Men Cryotherapy, or check them out at Men Cryotherapy. Dot com. That's M-E-N-D, cryotherapy.com. Title Boxing Club is here in Santa Clarita. We're fast-paced, action-packed, and addictive. We've got music pumping and energy flowing. Come out to the Title Boxing Club and embrace your inner power and sweat it out at Santa Clarita's best workout spot for you and your entire family. Join us for your first shot-free class at the Title Boxing Club on Bouquet Canyon and Newhall Ranch Road. Hometown Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. It's called The Business of Life with my very, very special guest. It was so timely to have them on. I've learned so much today that I'm going to put to work uh, immediately. Alex Urbina is his name. So blessed to have him in our community. He's helped literally thousands of people over the years to do a better job of raising their kids and and raising themselves. And as Alex said in the last segment, you know, parents need to raise themselves first before they can raise their kids. But I made an editorial comment before we went to break. I want to get Alex's take because when you talk to teachers or people in the educational system, they say, well, coach, we don't have the resources. And I said, that's baloney because if we have to enact a half-cent sales tax or a penny to provide the money that we need to solve some of these issues, I'd pay anything to protect our kids. Alex, what's your take? I think that you're a rare breed, and um, you know as much as you are committed to healing and to helping people, um, there's a lot of us out there. Um, however, I don't think that there's enough of us out there yet to cause that kind of healing and that kind of transformation in the world. And it's sad to say, but I think it's it's one of my commitments before I die is to hopefully cause a shift in humanity a conscious shift so that we're all operating from that place where we say, or I say that, you know, the world belongs to me and I'm responsible for healing it and doing my part. And I think if we all decided together collectively that I got to heal myself and then from healing myself that I got to heal my children and then from healing my children, I heal my family. If we all decided for one year to just work on ourselves and our kids and our family The world would transform overnight. And I think that, you know, for whatever reason, when we're unconscious as a society, as a world, we're always trying to focus on the solution being outside of us. And we start blaming. It's you guys because you haven't approved this. Or it's you guys because... And we start pointing uh, at fingers at things that are outside of us. But the answers are truly within us. And I know for a lot of you listening, you don't want to hear that. But when you start to tap into some of the universal uh, laws and the principles that the way the universe works um, and spirituality, the answers truly are within us. And we just got to go within ourselves to find them. But if we all did it together at the same time, we would heal the world. Uh, We just got to stop looking outside and we got to start looking inside. That takes courage. It takes courage. It it takes bravery to... Uh, look at oneself and admit that you don't have all the answers. It takes a lot of courage to find somebody like Alex Urbina and to, and to reach out for help. Because as I said earlier, when you're a parent, you don't want anybody telling you what to do. But as you just said, it, it starts starts with you. You can't be a great parent until you've got some things resolved yourself. And And it's funny, kids, Alex, 
and you know more about them than I do, but don't kids have a sixth sense about their own parents' parenting? Don't they have a sixth sense whether or not their parents are, are even loving them in a, in a way that they, they can uh, give back to society or, or give back even to their family unit? Don't kids have this sixth sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think that our children are wired in a certain way that they need their parents to parent them in a certain way. So here's an example. I know we've got to only have a couple more minutes, or actually a minute and a half. But let's say you have three children. Each one of your kids is wired in a certain way that they need you to parent them in their own way. And when I was growing up, our parents were like, hey, be lucky that you get got me as a parent. I'm going to parent the same way. And whichever goodies you get from my parenting, that's it. And you know, as long or or when I grew up, it was as long as you got a, a hot meal and a warm place to stay, you're blessed. But in today's world, each kid needs you to parent them and love them and speak to them and communicate to them in their way. And that's what's demanding in today's world for parents is that our kids need us to evolve in our parenting so that we can meet them where they are, hook their heart, heal them, so that we can empower them for the rest of their life. I'm going to have you back in a month. I'm going to give you an update on what I've learned today from you. And thank you for everything you do in our community. I I hope that people will flood the city council meeting next week and start this process of learning how uh, to get rid of this thing that we don't have the resources. We have the resources right here in Southern California, right here in Santa Clarita. All right. I know, yeah. before, before we go, Santa Clarita has extraordinary resources. I mean, uh, an abundance. It's not, it's not a shortage of help. It's enough people dis- deciding that they want to help, they, that, they, that they need help and that they want to grow and they want to heal. Well, you provide that leadership. You, you, you step up and provide that leadership. It, it, it's going to take somebody like you, Alex Urbina, well, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. I'll be an old troubadour when I'm gone. My favorite restaurant in Santa Clarita? Salt Creek Grill, of course. Great food neat atmosphere. For a business lunch or romantic dinner, I'll always go to Salt Creek. Hi, I'm Greg Amsler, owner of Salt Creek Grill. We have created Salt Creek to provide you with the most comfortable and inviting restaurant in Santa Clarita. Enjoy fresh mesquite grilled fish, aged steaks, and the best chops imaginable. There's entertainment every Friday and Saturday night, and we have the best Sunday brunch in town. Salt Creek is on Town Center Drive in Valencia. At City of Hope, we don't believe the future can wait for the future. For over a century, we've been advancing science that saves lives. From four of the world's top cancer-fighting drugs to the development of synthetic human insulin, we are maximizing the potential of immunotherapy and making precision medicine a reality. It's not enough to promise future cures for cancer. We must find them sooner. We are the miracle of science with soul. Find out more at cityofhope.org. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 2 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS, your hometown station. Kushner's clearance cut. Florida moves on guns. I'm Michael Toscano. Jared Kushner, President Trump's senior advisor and son-in-law, has lost access to the nation's top secrets. Jeff Zeleny reports from the White House that Kushner, who has not been able to get a permanent security clearance because of questions about his background, has seen his access downgraded. It's unclear exactly how this will impact his job. He is a senior advisor to the president who had a very wide portfolio, particularly dealing in Middle East peace, who needs top secret access to go through